So we helped the pirate, and we scared some people. And they got me scared, so I decided that maybe I ought to check into this and make sure that we haven't overdone this. Way back on 4-1, today is 427, so it's been 26 days. We put some oak chips in this. There's been some debate as to how many oak chips got put in. Some say one ounce, some say four ounces. I'm going to go with one because I'm pretty sure that's what I measured out. I misspoke when we were doing the video and I probably told her four and she wrote down four and that's where all the confusion began. But I'm here to tell you that I believe it was just one. But anyway, what are we going to do today? Well, you guys got me paranoid now. <coughs> so I'm going to take this guy off and we're going to have a taste of this. We're going to take a reading to see because we actually back sweeten this a little bit too. So I'm going to take a quick reading. And we're going to see what it's like. Okay, this was 10.22 three weeks ago. And it's 10.22 now. It's It hasn't changed. A lot of people were concerned. There was like a major uproar even. Uh, people were concerned. Why did I know it wasn't going to referment? I know because, well, it was already at like 14.2%. It was Lalvin 71B. It should stop about there. So even if it fermented a little, I didn't think it was going to go that bad. So let's take a little sample here. I do smell some oak. I have to admit, I can smell some oak in this. Um, again, the color on this is just spectacular. A little bit of oak, though. I get, I smell honey and grape. I don't really smell the, ah. Uh, I'm going to let her taste it, but. It smells really good. Yeah, it smells awesome. I do not believe there is an overwhelming oak flavor here. However, there's enough oak flavor. I think it's done. I think we can rack this. I yeah. think I think this is fine. Um, it's actually quite lovely. It does definitely, like there's that little bit of the vanillin and the caramel comes through. Just a, oh, we won't be racking this today now. Uh oh. Why did you do that? Did you okay. Just pour that in the bucket. <laughs> yeah. You saw what I just did, right? Don't do that. That's the second or third time I've done that now. <laughs> so as our intent was to rack this into a pitcher, which is off camera, he could have just poured that into the pitcher rather than here, and we could have gone ahead and racked. Sometimes we do things on purpose to make mistakes, to show you a point. That wasn't one of those times. So in this video, it'll magically go bloop, 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 and we'll have a clear beverage again, and we'll continue the racking process. What we have is a pyment that we started on October 30th of 2019. Today is June 10th of 2020. That makes this going on one of the older things that we've done. It's about eight months or so. That's just a long, long time. But we made it. It started at 1.100, went down to 1.000. That's about 14.2%. This is D47. We added eight ounces of honey, about half a pound and four ounces of rum-soaked oak chips. That was back on April 1st, 2020, giving us a 1.022 gravity. Today, we're gonna to open this sucker up and find out if it changed. All right, so let's just get the lid off and take a gravity read. See what's that, right? By the way, in case you're curious, yes, that is the first time that lid has been removed since April 1st. We really don't do stuff off camera. That's intentional. We, we like it to be just as much as a surprise for us as it is for you. <laughs> Was it intentional for us to let this sit on rum-soaked oat chips for that long? No. That's called... Oops. We made way too many brews in a short period of time and... Oh my God, they add up fast. And each one had so many extra videos to go with. That's why we've actually changed our system now. And you're gonna see a making of video and then you'll see everything else all in one video. Unless it's extraordinarily long, then we might break it up. Okay, so right off the bat, this looks like, oh, got some. Looks like 1.022 to me. I mean, it's like 1.021. That means this is good. This, this didn't go anywhere. Let me just pour a little bit off into this glass so that we can take a little taste. And the rest, I'm not going to pour in there because if I do, it'll go to the bottom, make all that wispy stuff go away. And By the way, the way this looks, you have to see this. It looks kind of like some apocalyptic landscape with like snow and stuff on the ground, like a nuclear bomb went off a thousand years ago and it's just growing back. Nuclear winter. Yeah, that. Mm -hmm. 
All right, for racking, we're using our latest cast member, Wibble, the white bucket of levitation. Hello. And I'm going to be putting the source up on top. Notice I'm moving it very carefully. That lease on the bottom there is a little bit uh, wibbly wobbly. Timey wimey. It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, timey wimey stuff. I'm just going to put this end in here. I'll stick this end in the jar. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Oops. Always be aware of your other end. You may or may not see this. So now we got into a pitcher and we eliminated most of the sediment, almost all of it. There was very, very little waste. We're just going to put this up here and we're going to siphon this back into a one gallon. Now you might be wondering, why didn't I just siphon right into the vessel immediately? It's because I wasn't sure on the exact size we were going to need. I know that this is a gallon up to about the spout, so that's still really close to a gallon. I think we're just going to be somewhere in here on the shoulder. I'm okay with that. I'm comfortable with that amount of uh, headspace. Uh, make sure this is in the liquid this time. Now, because there is no real sediment in there, she can just put that all the way to the bottom and not even worry about it. That's the beautiful thing about this racking, racking system. What it also does is any little bit that might have settled to the bottom will not be going in here. Now, some people might be thinking at this point, why don't you just pour it in since there's no sediment? You could do that. The reason I don't like to is it could introduce extra oxygen into the must. And at this point, it's not really something I want to do. It could oxidize, could cause some other problems. All right, so we're done with the racking, and I'm pretty close. That's, you know, hitting the shoulder. Is it a little too much? Yeah, I'll be honest, it's a little too much. But you know what? I'm actually pretty okay with this. The worst thing that can happen is this might oxidize a little bit, which could change the flavor ever so slightly. In some wines, that's actually preferable. Some people like it that way. But um, I don't think it's going to have that much of an effect because this is only going to sit for like a week, maybe two like this. Then we're going to bottle it. I'm just going to put a lid and airlock on this guy. We'll put the label back on. We will notate that we racked it today. And I mean, it looks pretty clear. looks pretty good. I don't think there's going to be much sediment. And then next time you see this, we're going to be bottling it. But let's have a taste. On the smell, it doesn't smell grapey. It doesn't smell whiny. It smells, it smells like mead, which, you know, shocker. I mean, it's mead, right? little bit of the rum on the, the aroma, too. Not too, too much. Just a tiny bit. She's going to take the first taste this time. Ooh. It has more of the wine mouthfeel. The tannins and yes. stuff really come through on the, the mouthfeel of it. I think some of that is from the oak, too, though. Yeah. It's got a little bit of sweetness, but not overly so. It's definitely not as sweet as we normally go for. Got a little bit of a fruity bite to it. The tartness, a little bit of astringency. The oak mellows it out. I can definitely feel it's round in my mouth. Yeah. It, 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 it's, this is great. I yeah. mean, this, this is really, really nice. I wouldn't say it's my favorite mead ever, but it's certainly a very good mead. And it has a lovely clarity to it. I if think this is going to... If you enjoy mead and you're looking for something a little different, this is a great route to go. Yeah. it. it I think if we use store-bought grapes, it, we might even get a different flavor. Sure. This was using our grapes. Really interesting, though. And um, we'll see what this does when we bottle it. Thank you.